To most people, this just looks like a perfectly normal 13 inch unibody MacBook Pro, but it isn't. This is one of the most rare MacBooks that you will find. And that's saying a lot, because if there's one word that you could use to describe pretty much any MacBook, it wouldn't be rare, because they're not. But this one is. So in today's video, I'm gonna tell you why this MacBook only existed for a couple of months 14 years ago, and why it doesn't exist anymore. So make sure to get subscribed, leave a like down below, and let's get started. Hey guys, it's me, Normal Luke. Only joking, it is I, Fancy Luke, here to talk about today's video sponsor, Masterworks. Masterworks lets you access investments most would have only dreamed of in the past. Investments the wealthy have had a monopoly on for centuries. And now most wealth managers recommend it as well. I'm talking about contemporary art. With times like now where the S&P 500 is down significantly for the year and there are numerous stories talking about uncertainty in traditional stocks, now more than ever it makes sense to diversify your investment portfolio with one of the most stable asset classes around. Masterworks has so far sold three paintings and they've returned over 30% net IRR to their investors. Of course, past performance is no guarantee of future results, but 30% plus is pretty amazing, especially in times where firms like JP Morgan are stating that alternatives are no longer optional. Now might be a perfect time to diversify your portfolio with work from artists like Banksy, Basquiat, and Picasso, to name a few. If you want to join other fancy investors by checking out Masterworks, it's as easy as clicking the link in the description below to get started today. And now let's get back to the video. So you might be thinking, Luke, what the heck are you talking about? This is a 13 inch unibody MacBook Pro. What's so special about that? It looks like every other one out there. Well, if you look a little bit closer, you'll notice that this isn't a MacBook Pro at all. This is a MacBook, no suffix. And this particular MacBook in this particular form only existed for about eight months before the MacBook Pro as we know it came to be. But to tell you about why this thing exists, we have to talk about its bigger brother, the 15 inch 2008 Unibody MacBook Pro. This was the first MacBook Pro that Apple made with their Unibody design language. But contrary to popular belief, it wasn't the first Unibody MacBook because that honor would go to the MacBook Air, which came out a couple of months earlier. Quick refresher, a unibody design is one where the frame, chassis, and enclosure are all milled out of a single piece. So in previous MacBooks, there was actually a metal frame on the inside, and then you had a bottom case that was screwed onto that. You had a top case, which was, you know, the keyboard, the trackpad, the palm rest, which screwed onto that. And then there were plastic gaskets around it. It wasn't very clean, it wasn't very minimal. So the unibody was the solution to that. So precision unibody enclosure. This is what the unibody looks like. I'd like to actually pass one of these around. <coughs> and alongside that was this, the 13 inch MacBook. Now you have to understand that while it might seem obvious to us now to have a 13 inch MacBook Pro, in 2008, that wasn't the case because the MacBook Pro came in 15 and 17 inch sizes. Before that, the PowerBook also came in 15 and 17 inch sizes and anything small was given a different name, the iBook. So when Apple made a 13 inch version of the MacBook Pro using basically the same design, it only made sense to call it the MacBook. But here's the thing there was already a MacBook. The polycarbonate MacBook, which hadn't been updated with a unibody design yet, was still around. Why would you sell two different laptops that look completely different, but have the same name? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? Evidently, Apple realized this as well, because just a few months after this came out, they decided, okay, you know what? Never mind. We're not gonna do that anymore. We're just gonna call this the MacBook Pro, 13 inch. And then when they brought in the 17 inch MacBook Pro, you had a much more cohesive lineup where they all had the same design elements 
but they came in 13, 15, and 17 inch sizes. Problem solved. And what we're left with is this, a weird relic of when Apple's marketing team couldn't quite figure out what they wanted to do. Now, if you actually look at this MacBook versus the MacBook Pro that immediately replaced it in 2009, there aren't really a ton of differences. I mean, internally, they use the exact same graphics chipset, the NVIDIA GeForce 9400M, and the only difference is slightly different clock speeds on the Core 2 Duo CPUs. So internally, pretty much the same. Externally, well, there are actually a few differences and really interesting features that this MacBook has that you won't find on any other 13-inch MacBook Pro. And to show you what those are, I happen to have another 13-inch MacBook Pro. This is the one that everyone will recognize that looked exactly the same from 2009 until 2012. And if you put them side by side, you will notice a few things. Starting on the outside, the port layout was different. On the MacBook Pro, you got a Firewire port and eventually a Thunderbolt port on this 2012 model, in addition to the two USB ports. You also got an SD card slot on the MacBook Pro, which you didn't on the MacBook, and there was a headphone combo jack instead of separate input and outputs like there used to be. Also, on the 2008 MacBook, the Kensington lock is on the left side, where the MacBook Pro moved it to the right side by the DVD drive. On the inside, you might not notice a ton of differences. The only thing that really stands out is that it says MacBook over here and MacBook Pro over here. But if you look a little closer, you'll notice that the unibody MacBook didn't come with a backlit keyboard, whereas every version of the MacBook Pro did. And if you look closer at these displays, which are theoretically the same, they're both listed as 1280 by 800 TFT glossy widescreen displays, but you probably notice that this one looks a lot worse. And that's not just a difference in brightness or camera setting, this screen is actually really terrible. The color accuracy is terrible, the black levels are awful, the viewing angles are atrocious. This panel is far worse in every measurable way compared to the unibody MacBook Pro that came after it. Now, in terms of other differences, I saved the best for last because if you turn these MacBooks over, you will immediately notice that the 2008 unibody MacBook has a little hatch. And this allows me to demonstrate the unibody MacBook's pièce de résistance because, oh dear, I'm at 19% battery. Whatever shall I do? Well, fear not, because if I connect the MacBook to power, I don't actually need to wait for it to charge. All I have to do is go ahead and shut the device, turn it over like so, pop open this cover, which does not require a single screw, lift the battery straight out, super easy, and then, well, look at that. I happen to have another battery here, which I can pop right in, Put the cover back on, there we go. Turn the machine over and open it up. And in just a second, it wakes right back up, but now has 74% battery. That's right, these things have hot swappable batteries. And that is a feature that you will not find on any MacBook after this one. Now granted, the battery life when this thing was new was rated at five hours, which is two hours less than you got on the 13 inch MacBook Pro that replaced it. And that's because the mechanisms to have that hatch require you to put this wall that goes across the machine that it can actually latch onto. There's also a very strange looking connector for the battery and all of that means that it's smaller. It doesn't have as much capacity and therefore the battery life is less even with the same internals. However, to be honest, I would kind of take that trade. I mean, five hours of battery life, that's not great. But if you bring another battery and charge it up beforehand, all you have to do is plug into power for just a second while you swap it over, or just shut it down, put in the new battery and turn it back on again, honestly, and you're good to go. It's a really great feature and I wish that they would bring it back. But before you go down and hate comment about how Apple used to be so much better under Steve Jobs, let me tell you that that is not necessarily the case because this machine is internally almost identical to the 2009 13-inch MacBook Pro 
and yet that machine can be upgraded to eight gigabytes of RAM, this can only go to six. Why? Well, not for any actual rational reason, Apple merely limited the amount of RAM that it could take in firmware to prevent people from buying this over something more expensive. It's still Apple, guys. You know, it's not like they used to do everything perfectly and now they do everything bad. It's Apple. So that is the 13 inch unibody MacBook. It's a rare glimpse into one of Apple's marketing blunders that they corrected. And if you have one of these, then congratulations, you are super cool because this is a pretty rare piece of Apple tech and you don't see them too often. Now, as for whether you should buy one of these to use now, I mean, you might've noticed that mine's running Catalina. It, it does most of what a 2009 can do. However, the screen is so bad that I wouldn't. It's really, truly terrible. So that's gonna do it for today's video. Let me know what you think about this weird, obscure MacBook from 14 years ago. I'm curious to know what you guys think. And of course, make sure to leave a like down below, comment, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos. And with that, I'll see you all in the next one.